Hi, I'm Dave Fornell, the editor of Imaging Technology News Magazine, and uh, I'm here at SNM 2011. One of the key trends that we've been seeing here at the show, and even here on the show floor, is with uh, PET MRI. It's a new imaging modality that'll integrate uh, both uh, positron emission tomography and uh, magnetic resonance imaging. Uh, one of the problems that uh, has been encountered with trying to develop these systems in the past is uh, the MR uh, has interference with the photomultipliers in these systems. So uh, three different companies, GE, Siemens, and Philips, have three different approaches that they're taking to this technology right now. Siemens has a system that integrates both the PET and the MR into one machine, uh, so it has the smallest amount of floor space. Uh, and they recently got CE Mark, and they are uh, right now in their trials for uh, FDA. It, the Philips system uh, also received CE Mark earlier this year in January, and they are in the midst of uh, 510K review by the FDA right now, and they're hoping for approval possibly by the end of 2011. GE has a system that uses uh, their existing PET and MRI systems. They have a uh, trolley gantry where they could pull the table off of one machine, put it onto a trolley, bring them to the next room, and load them back into the other machine, uh, keeping patient registration. Siemens, their system has, uh, is the only system that combines both modalities into one machine. And uh, the advantage of that is that it can show uh, synchronized uh, motion on both modalities at once. We spoke with executives from all three companies and uh, we'll have them explain some of their systems here on the show floor. Thank you. I'm with Doug Darrow who's Vice President of Molecular Imaging with uh, Siemens Healthcare and uh, wanted to find a little bit more about your Biograph MMR absolutely, system. Absolutely. Uh, my understanding is that you got CE Mark uh, the last week of May 2011. That's correct. And of course, getting the CE mark is one of the first steps that we need in order to make sure that we get this, distribu this system distributed across the country. We're very excited about this. And you're entering uh, FDA trials now? That is correct. It has been submitted to the FDA for, uh, for submission and, and clearance to market. And you're, you have your first install at uh, Mass General? Absolutely. We installed it at Mass General uh, approximately uh, six weeks ago. Mm -hmm. The system's up and running, and they're already beginning some of their, their, uh, their studies on that. And with uh, this system, you have a little different approach uh, at Siemens on how to tackle uh, the hybrid modality of PET MR. Yeah, yeah. Um, clearly, a, a, an MR environment is, is about as toxic as you can get to conventional PET imaging. Mm -hmm. But nonetheless, we thought it was very important that um, we create a device that um, not only can do PET and uh, MR imaging simultaneously, but of course, being able to do it at the same point in time to be able to get simultaneous PET and MR imaging. Very exciting. And what are some of the technical difficulties that Siemen had to overcome? Because uh, my understanding with uh, you have a PET system and you have uh, your uh, conventional yeah, imaging uh, detectors, right. uh, there's usually some issues. Well, well, with the traditional PET imaging, of course, we have the, uh, the scintillating crystal. We also have photomultiplier tubes. Mm -hmm. But if we were to put that much hardware inside a traditional MR uh, gantry, mm -hmm. essentially the gantry would be too small to be functional for human, human imaging. So what we needed to do is we needed to compress some of this data and compress some of this technology so that we'd still be able to use the entire donut, which is what we were able to do by using uh, uh, avalanche photo uh, diodes. And these are ceramic based on That is correct, that okay. is correct. So essentially we've got an integrated body coil as well as integrated uh, gradient coils and integrated uh, cooling and pet detectors all in the, uh, all in the gantry. Hmm. And my understanding is with uh, one of the advances that made this technology possible, especially with the Siemens system, mm -hmm. is that you have uh, a 70 centimeter bore. That's correct. And you have, now have the real estate to put those extra detectors in. That is correct. We wanted to make sure we were able to still maintain um, as large a bore as possible, and, but yet still get all the technology that we needed inside it. We really thought it was important, especially when we're looking at things like neurology, cardiac imaging, or oncology imaging, that we really are able to do both simultaneous PET and MR imaging. What are some of the applications that Siemens sees for the system in the coming years? Well, it's, it's interesting because uh, this really is getting a lot of excitement, of course, mm -hmm. by both the clinical and the scientific community. And uh, our customers are coming to us with some really interesting ideas. They're looking at things like, for instance, uh, in oncology, um, some of the disease states that really are not as optimally imaged by CT, for instance, pelvic or breast imaging, or other areas where we want to be concerned about dose, whether it's pediatric or what have you. Um, in neurology, we're looking at uh, increasing our understanding, for instance, of either Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, or stroke. 
Um, and even in cardiology, looking at soft plaque in a new way or being able to improve our quantification of blood flow, whether it's arterial or, or myocardial. These are just some of the things and just a start of what, what our people want to start uh, exploring and experimenting with us. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate your Thank time. you so much. Thank appreciate you. it. And I'm in the Phillips booth at S&M 2011. I'm with Troy Havens. He is a senior product manager, global marketing, with nuclear medicine and pet at Phillips Healthcare. Uh, wanted to find out a little bit about your uh, pet MR system that, uh, that you've developed and uh, that you currently have CE marked uh, in January. Yeah, January 2011 was really our uh, CE mark for the system. We've had this program in development for about four years now. Um, pet MR is really driving a lot of excitement in the market, and we've taken a a very straightforward approach. Uh, we've taken our, our 3TMR, exact same performance that I do as a standalone MR system, along with our PET system, minus the CT system. So dose reduction mm -hmm. and clinical research in neurology, cardiology, and oncology are really driving the research with this type of device. And with the design of your system, uh, what uh, what's different about your system and how, how have you done the implementation? But it, it's key, we feel time of flight and our astonished time of flight is, is across our PET CT fleet. And we want to drive that same performance with, with our PET and PET MR. So not taking a step back in performance on PET, not taking a step back in performance on MR, really driving the best of both worlds for a combined device. Mm -hmm. And it's important that the patient stays in the same position in the breast coils or the prostate coils or the head coils for the MR exam and the PET. So that registration Wheeler system is really the, the, the key driver behind this type of development. Right. And then uh, you have installations already in Europe? Yeah, we have actually at four installations. Um, one in the U.S., our first installation was at Mount Sinai, Univer mm -hmm. Mount Sinai Health Center in New York. Our second installation is at University of Geneva in Switzerland. Our third installation is at the Helmholtz Center in uh, Dresden, Germany. And our fourth installation, just being installed, is in Madrid, Spain at the CNIC. We have actually multiple customers as well coming along um, at the end of this year, but our four, four current sites are, are driving our clinical investigation today. Okay. And uh, explain a little bit how your system works, because you have uh, your MR and your PET system in the same room. Exactly. It, just like PET-CT is today, really a, a sequential exam, we've got the two systems with, with one patient table that drives the registration between both systems. The patient will have the, the MR exam, First for registration and attenuation correction, mm -hmm. and then move for the PET for the for the diagnostic PET workup, and then if needed, come back to the MR for additional diagnostic work on the MR. So the flexibility of the system is really the driver, but also the performance of both the time of flight on the PET as well as the premium 3T applications on the MR are really the key drivers behind our application. And one of the key parts of the system is that you have a table that can rotate, lock into position, and you could get uh, accurate registration no matter what system you're in. It really is the key driver behind our application, maintaining that registration with the, with the PET and the MR and the patient in the same position as well as the RF coils. It's the exact same algorithm we use with the PET-CT, but using that technology for PET-MR, really driving the, the fusion between the post devices versus using a, a software application which can cure you know, registration errors and inaccuracy in the fusion. That's the point. And what do you see as some of the future applications with PET-MR? That's a great question. There's, there's a wide range of applications. One of the biggest drivers of the applications is really the, the radionuclei. And right now a lot is being done with FTG, and we're seeing great value in that. But when you get into new compounds for, for neurodegenerative diseases, um, some Alzheimer's workup in neuro is big. Also in oncology, soft tissue neck, breast and prostate are, are key applications that really, PET-CT has limitations with the soft tissue contrast. MR is really driving more detail in that area. And also cardiology. Plaque characterization, vulnerable plaque versus hard plaque, that cardiology atmosphere is really growing as well. So the big three are neurology, cardiology, and um, oncology for support with the PET-MR device. Well, thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. And I'm here at the s and Show 2011 with uh, Vivek Bhatt, who is the General Manager of Positron Emission Tomography at GE Healthcare. And uh, I wanted to find out a little bit more about GE's approach to PET-MR, since it is uh, one of the new trends uh, at this show. Certainly in the sessions, there's a lot of discussion about it. So, so, so our approach really is, let's go figure out what the clinical value is first. And what we're doing is we're enabling that by having a PET CT MR system where you have two independent systems next to each other which can be used independently for clinical imaging with a transport mechanism between that which keeps the patient uh, stable you know, as you move from one system to the other. And it gives very good images uh, you know, that, that you can fuse together and figure out what is the value that an MR part of the image is bringing to the overall uh, you know, PET CT. 
So if, to answer questions like, where is PetMR going to be better than PetCT? Where is PetMR maybe not as good as PetCT? What are some of the applications where uh, you know, both of them are probably the same? So to answer questions like that is what we believe is step number one in making this hybrid modality successful. And that's what our PetCT MR system does. And then uh, what are some of the future plans that GE has once uh, this sort of a modality is uh, justified through clinical data? So, so once we have the clinical information and we say, look, I mean, here is what, what is needed. The way we are looking at overall PET MR, as I said, it's, uh, it's, it's not a sprint. It's not a two-year journey. PET MR is going to be here with us for the long term. It's, uh, it's a 10, 15-year journey on the research side. There's a lot of work that needs to be done. And when you talk about uh, what, what PET MR really is going to be for the next 15 years and the amount of research that's needed, you really need a system that enables that research, that has all the components uh, you know, that you need in it. So when you talk about an MR, does it enable all the right tools that a researcher would need? So whether we're talking about the gradient strength, whether you're talking about multinuclear spectroscopy, you know, let's just make sure that what that MR provides is something that you would need for research not only today, but over the next 10 years. When you look at, on the PET side, same thing. It's not about what, is, what do we need from PET right away. What are you going to need from PET for the next 10 years as new traces come in, as, as you do research on novel techniques? You know, so things like, you know, does your PET detector have the right sensitivity? Does it have time of flight? Does it have some of the more latest reconstruction quantitative techniques? Does it have motion correction? So all of those are, again, key to making this truly the right research modality so that you have the best MR and the best uh, you know, PET performance. And that's what you know, we intend to put together uh, for the, uh, for the longer-term integrated system. And one of the advantages of the GE system that you've come up with right now is that it's uh, 510K approved and it's uh, available. Right, and, and, and that, that's actually that's a key point. I mean, that's one of the big feedback we had from our customers is, you know, they are very excited about this. They're excited about the potential of uh, PetMR. But they're also worried that, look, the amount of investment that they need to make is sometimes out of their reach. But the Pet City MR solution today, what it enables is, you know, in a lot of the time, you, you are able to use the Pet CT and the MR independently to do clinical studies. Well, thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you. For, thank you.